Symphonies are strange to me. Farewell symphony. No surprise. Uh, Name a symphony in which a taxi horn is heard. Mr. Levant. It's not a symphony. It's a, it's a tone poem by Gershwin, uh, American in Paris. But that's yes. not a symphony. Well, we're going to call it a symphony for the next two or three seconds. I'm going to say symphony. <laughs> symphony. All right. All right. We've got four and a half out of five, thanks to Mr. Levant. Mr. Fadiman. Yes, Mrs. Knox. Could we drop those uh, musical questions? They all seem phony to me. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. <Knox. laughs> <laughs> Mr. Knox, I'm going to ask you back. There... <laughs> now, so far, we... Uh, Announce the loss of exactly ten dollars. And now, Mr. Cross, this is our custom. We're going to allow you one minute as our expert on Canada Dry. Thank you, Mr. Fallon. To most people, ginger means pep. That's why we say for a quick pickup, an inward refreshener, drink a tall glass of sparkling Canada Dry ginger ale. A secret process brings out the full, rich flavor of the world's best ginger. So please remember that with meals or whenever you want a lift, drink Canada Dry. It's gingivating. By the way, have you sent for your information, please, game? Here's a game that's fun for old and young alike, for now you can play information, please, at home, just like the experts do here in the studio. It's easy for everyone to get an information, please, game. Send to Canada Dry, 1 Pershing Square, New York, or if you live in Canada, Canada Dry, Toronto, Canada, 10 cents, your name and address, and a label from two bottles of any of Canada Dry's beverages. Might be one ginger ale and one sparkling water label. In any event, simply remove enough of these labels to identify them. Since the labels are only glued on two edges, they can be easily removed by cutting in a little from the left or right-hand side. Thank you, Mr. Cross. You are five seconds over, but it sounded like a very important announcement. So let's go this evening. Now, suppose we go on with the <laughs> next half of the program. This question comes from Miss Edith Engel of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Now, Mrs. Norris and gentlemen, what book or play might you recommend to each of the following because of the aptness of its title? This is a test of your ingenuity. One, Rip Van Winkle. What book or play would you uh, recommend to Rip Van Winkle? Book or play with a very apt title. Mr. Levant. How to win friends and influence people. <laughs> uh, I don't know that I'd accept that one. Well, it's, it did all right with me. I slept. <laughs> Not sure that I'd accept that. I'd like to have a better one than that. Uh, the Great Waltz, it's the same thing. Great Waltz? No, we'll take that one. How, uh, Mr. Adams, do you have one? Now you can sleep. Is that a, a title of a book? Mm-hmm. Who wrote it? He I think the name up, was you know. Jacobson. I beg pardon? Dr. Jacobson. Recent book. All right, I'll accept it. Uh, subject to further inquiry. That's one. Uh, what book or play would you recommend to Venus de Milo? Uh, Mr. Adams. Arms and the Man. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Did you have a, an alternative, Mr. Kieran? Uh, live alone and like it. Not so good for Venus de Milo, I think. Uh, just no the opposite, arms probably. in the man, I think. I beg pardon? No arms in the man. Uh, yes, or a farewell to arms might farewell be even better, yes. <laughs> uh, Robinson Crusoe. Have to get four to five on this. What uh, book would you recommend to Robinson Crusoe? Either before or after he met Friday. <laughs> Mrs. Norris, did you have an idea? Book or play? Five-day week. No, I won't take that one. Yes, Mr. Kieran? The man who was Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tricky idea, Mr. Le uh, Mr. Kieran, but I don't think quite uh, apt for the purpose. There's one very good one that you'd recommend to uh, Robinson Crusoe during the period in which he was without a man Friday. Uh, Mr. Treasure Adam. Island. Treasure Island. I'll accept that. I think that'd be perfectly all right. Live alone and like it, I think, might be even better. Uh, for Silas Marner. Silas Marner. Book or play? Uh, Mr. Kieran. Brewster's Millions. Brewster's Millions? Yes, that's possible. Possible? Probable. <laughs> How about another one? A play, a very recent play. Oh, I don't know about the recent play. How about The Gold Rush? Yes, you, The Gold Rush be all right. You can't take it with you? Yes, thank you mm -hmm. very much, Mrs. Norris. That's quite right. You can't take it with you. And uh, fifth and last, Henry the Eighth. Henry the Eighth, Mr. Levant. Having a wonderful time. Oh, Mr. Levant. <laughs> I suppose I'll have to take that. <laughs> Next question. This comes from Miss Mildred L. Joy of Coscob, Connecticut. Explain the origin of the following phrases that we constantly use. There are three of them, and we have to get the origin of all three. One, not worth a continental. Mr. Kieran. 
why the Continental soldiers were paid off after the uh, Revolutionary War in uh, some sort of uh, uh, paper money that wasn't worth much and that caused uh, two rebellions, one of which was Shays' Rebellion up in uh, New England. And so that uh, term of reproach attached to that sort of money. That's exactly correct. Uh, the second uh, phrase, thumbs up and thumbs down, two that go together. Uh, Mr. Kieran again. That comes from the uh, Roman uh, gladiator days yes, when uh, uh, the uh, gladiator who put up a good fight, uh, he could appeal to the audience, the spectators, and if they held their thumbs up, his life was spared, and if they held their thumbs down, why... Uh, yes, had the opposite it. happened. Actually, if they held their thumbs out, uh, he was killed, and if they concealed their thumbs, uh, they granted him mercy. But we have come to think of it as thumbs up and thumbs down. Nowadays, thumbs up, of course, has a totally different signification. What does it mean usually? All right. It means okay. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Norris. <laughs> Hitchhiking, of course. All right. Uh, the oh. third. <laughs> the origin of the third expression. The third expression is Achilles' heel. Uh, Mrs. Norris. Achilles' heel was the only sensitive part of Achilles. And uh, what about it? What uh, happened as a result of his having That's that? That's as far as I go with Achilles, Frank. Not you... sensitive, vulnerable. Vulnerable. Vulnerable, yeah. vulnerable, vulnerable. yes. Uh, do you want to finish that up, Mr. Adams? And uh, what does it mean in, in uh, ordinary parlance today? The sensitive spot. Yes, a, a particularly yes, a vulnerable spot. The vulnerable spot, spot yes. yes. That's right. He was dipped in the river, but his mother held him by the heel, and that was the only part that was uh, not, uh, didn't get the That's uh, the soothing story, influence. Karen, really. thank you very much. That Has used he a to book be here, a... Frank? <laughs> Achilles no? is here. We've no? got it now. It used to May be the most famous yours. heel in history, <laughs> as a matter of fact, though there's been a lot of competition lately. The uh, next question from Mr. Sidney Mailman of Brooklyn, New York. Oh, Mrs. Norris, I don't know whether we ought to uh, give you this question. Have you ever read any of the Frank Marywell stories? You don't have to admit that you've read them if you yes, don't Yes, I to. did, but it was back in Chester B. Arthur's administration, and I don't... <laughs> oh, come, come, come. <laughs> I don't seem to remember them very well. Oh, you must have nine lives like a cat. Then. <laughs> All right, here are four questions based upon the Frank Marywell stories, and we have to get every one of the questions correctly answered. One, what university did the Marywells attend? Uh, Mr. Levant. Yale. Yale. Yale's most famous alumni. That's quite true. Two, what was the name, either the first or the last name, of Frank's sweetheart? That's a tough one. I'm not talking to you, Mr. Adams. I mean Frank Marywell. <laughs> Frank Marywell was his sweetheart, the way I read it. He was... <laughs> oh, you sound like a literary critic. <laughs> he was pretty no. stuck on himself. Uh, no, he was awfully stuck on himself. That's quite true. It was a lifelong love affair, but I, there, was a, there was a girl involved. Mary Bryan, it usually isn't Paramount Pictures. No, it won't go. It won't go. There was a real girl involved. Any of you remember either the first or the last name? It was Inza Burridge. I can't think of any more useful piece of information than that. <laughs> Inza Burridge. We got that one wrong. Third, who was the aboriginal friend of the Merrywells? The aboriginal friend of the Merrywells. Mr. Adams, you usually remember these things. I never read Frank Marrowell at all. Didn't you really? No. Nope. Are you going to now? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Joe uh, Crowfoot, an Indian. Joe Crowfoot, an Indian. And finally, what was Frank's famous pitching delivery? I ought to get that one out of you, Mr. Karen. Frank's famous pitching delivery. What was it called? Don't have to remember. Screwball. No, no, <laughs> no. The double shoot, because it curved both ways. Did you remember that now, Mr. Karen? Well, that's going to cost Canada Dry $10, going to Mr. Sidney Mailman of Brooklyn, New York. The uh, next question. This is from Mrs. Frances Frederick Phillips of Verona, New Jersey. What singers of jazz, what singers of jazz made the following sounds famous? Now, I'll have to give you these sounds as uh, correctly as I can. Boop, 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 boop. Helen Kane. Helen Kane, thank you, Mr. Levant. Next one, uh, I don't know whether I can sing this. <laughs> boo, 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 boo. Oh, do you know that one, Mr. Levant? Bing uh, Crosby. Bing Crosby, yes, that's right. <laughs> Heidi, Heidi, Heidi Ho. Mr. Levant. Cab Calloway. And ha-cha-cha-cha. Jimmy Durant. Oh, well, you know all that. <laughs> right. Too easy. Too easy. <laughs> That's wonderful. Joe Crowfoot. You don't spend your time <laughs> in the proper place. <laughs> <laughs> that sticks in your Crowfoot, doesn't it, Mr. Levant? <laughs> the uh, next question from Mary Alice Clements of Atlanta, Georgia. Give the names of the characters who are known by the following expressions or phrases. One, the Count of Monte Cristo. The Count of Monte Cristo. Who, what was his real name? Edmund Dante. Thank you very much, Mr. Kieran. Two, Madame Butterfly. Mrs. Norris? Did you... Cho Cho Sand. Cho Cho Sand. Thank you, Mrs. Norris. Three, The Man Without a Country. 
and without a country. Just oh, saw it in the Warner Brothers short. So. I know. When you should remember the name, we all should know that one. Uh, Mrs. Norris, do you remember? Nolan? Yes, first name? Ed. Philip. Philip. Philip, Philip, Philip is right. Well, I think we'll give you a uh, full score on Nolan. For The Lady with the Camellias. Uh, Mr. Kieran? Uh, Marguerite Gautier. Marguerite Gautier, yes. And five, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Mr. Kieran? Casimodo. Yes, all on Cheney. That's quite correct. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, see what you can do with this one. This one comes from Mr. R.C. Fuller of Allen Park, Michigan. Give five retorts from father as Junior asks for a little spending money. Mrs. Norris, we'll let you in as a mother on this one. It's really <laughs> the same situation. Five uh, possible retorts. When Junior asks for a little when spending Junior money? Junior asks for a little uh, spending of money. Of father? Uh, Ask yes. your mother. Ask your... Oh, that's the one you know, Mrs. Yes. Norris. Thank you very much. That's what. Uh, Mr. Adams? You better have a little more. I never heard it said. Oh, no. ironically, I get it. Ah, yep. yes. All right, too. Uh, Mr. Levant. No, I mean it. Do you? Oh, what a nice family you belong oh, to. Uh, Mr. Levant. Go away, you little bum. What am I, a millionaire? And what a dreadful <laughs> family you come from, Mr. Levant. That's three. Uh, Mr. Kieran. When I was a boy, I never had any such money given to me. Yes, that's the one I remember, Mr. Kieran. And five. Let's have one more. <laughs> Yes, uh, Mrs. Norris. What do you do with all this money? Yes, that's a very good one. Well, information, please, announces a final loss of $20. I think we did very well tonight. Uh, Mr. Cross? I'm curious to know who our guests will be next week. But I'm also curious to know how many of our audience have remembered to send for their information, please, game. Here is a game two or more can play and have a wonderful evening. This game permits you to play information, please, just as they do here in the studio, except that you and your friends are the experts. Now, here's how you get your game. Send to Canada Dry, 1 Pershing Square, New York, or if you live in Canada, Canada Dry, Toronto, Canada, 10 cents, your name and address, and a label from two bottles of any of Canada Dry's beverages. Might be one ginger ale and one sparkling water label. In any event, simply remove enough of these labels to identify them. Since the labels are only glued on two edges, they can be easily removed by cutting in a little from the left or right-hand side. Thank you. Now, here's the quartet of experts for next Tuesday. Mr. Kieran again, Mr. Adams again, Mr. Mark Duffield of the New York Herald Tribune, and as our very distinguished guest of honor, a gentleman whose name is a household word wherever wit is honored, a star of the stage, of radio, and of literature, the suave and imperturbable Dr. Alexander Wolcott. Uh, letters with questions, remember, to be addressed to information, please, Canada Dry, 1 Pershing Square, New York City. All questions become the property of information, please, 1 Pershing Square, New York City. As we bid Mr. Fadiman good night, let me remind you that Canada Dry Ginger Ale, Sparkling Water, Lime Ricky, and Tom Collins Mixer come in convenient-sized bottles for every occasion. <laughs> <laughs>